Howdy all, this is Texas Gaming Industries here, and welcome back to another episode of my Let's Play Transport Fever 2 Free Mode Edition. In the previous episode, we began our operations by building our first set of tracks at the town of Leventon and connecting to the town of Greenwood and our first industry, the Greenwood Waterworks, as well as planning our connections to this alcohol distillery as well as connecting to this bottling plant to transport loads of alcohol and alcoholic drinks to both the towns of Longhorn and Leamington. Now, before we continue, I want to at least make sure to notify all of you on what my certain tasks and conditions are for this free mode game. So, let's have a quick look at it, shall we? Okay, so, here are the tasks that I need to complete in order for me to secure myself as a transport tycoon master. Task 1 is to operate a profitable train, bus, truck, trolley, shipping, and airplane route, and each one has to make a profit each year. Ships, however, in this case, will be only carrying cargo, and planes will only be carrying passengers. Task 2 is to connect to every town on the map. Task 3 is to deliver at least one of each particular product in the game, aka all freight cargoes. Task 4 is to at least provide one town with all the needed supplies, basically all the required commercial and industrial goods. Task 5 is to build a dedicated high-speed railway line for use for the Japanese Zero Series Shaykansen that I have in my mod list. Task 6 is to basically get a company score at least 40 to 50. Task 7 is to basically not go beyond a $500 million loan. Task 8 is to use at least a one of each type of vehicle. Thing is, however, I... Well, multi-packs basically don't count as there are tons of vehicles in that. If I at least use one vehicle from that multi-pack, then everything is okay. But this basically means later on I can also basically swap out vehicles once I start getting one that is a little more modern and a little basically more easier to cut down maintenance costs. Task 9 is to transport at least 100,000 units of passengers and freight. And task 10 is to basically reach a total amount of cash of $10 billion. Now with that out of the way, let's get started with basically getting our railway system up and running. So, let's look at this brewery. The Longhorn Alcohol Distillery requires either grain or sugarcane with water to produce barrels of alcohol. And next door, on the other side of the railroad crossing, is this Longhorn Bottling Plant, which requires one unit of alcohol to produce one unit of alcoholic drinks. Thankfully, the, the town of Leamington requires alcoholic drinks, and as well as Longhorn, along with barrels of alcohol. So we can basically start transporting these commodities into town. First of all, I want to at least make this road into to this brewery a little more nicer. And we'll place down a 360 meter freight station, four tracks, because we'll be because I have a feeling that there'll be some places that need alcohol later on. I need to have one space for carrying sugarcane and grain, as well as water. Put that in place. I'm also going to basically do this. Let's see. 50. Well, it's going to be a short trip in. Do this, and then, and there we go. Now we have our first industries connected to each other that require a particular commodity. We're also going to flatten the ground a bit to make it a little more smoother, and as well placing down our train station. We're going to place down a 360-meter passenger station on this side. Since this is basically to be renamed to Longhorn, 
and this is going to be renamed to Longhorn Brewery. Now, for the station platforms, first of all, we got to get rid of these two pieces for the wooden crossover track. Is that all the station platforms right now, especially between 1850 and 1920, will be basically made of the Mad Hatter's wooden platforms. So, if we build a station in 1920, it will basically be using the Mad Hatter concrete platforms, yet we will still be using the pedestrian walkway. And from 1920 till around, I believe, 1970, possibly 1980, I'm not so sure. I can't remember what era the modern platforms come in. But, I think the 1990s or early 2000s, I'm not so sure. But anyway, once the, once the 1920s give way to the stage the default station era 3, that's when new stations will basically be using that particular design. Alright, we got the main passenger station finished for the express trains, and now let's basically start placing down platforms for the local passenger trains that will use this station. Again, we're basically only starting off small for now. We're not going to operate a large fleet of trains, as we need to basically watch how much we are loaning out. If we basically go over $500 million in the loan, then we basically failed for that particular task. Let's continue placing down a couple more station platforms. And then let's work on adding the cargo section. We'll place the car cargo platforms right next to the passenger ones. And then we'll place down the two tracks for the freight station. I don't know how that got into three rails. Do that. And then let's add the next section of cargo platforms to this side, and that will basically do it. Longhorn South will be renamed to Longhorn... You know what? I just realized. Yard will basically be used for trains going through, for through stations, and signings will be used for the stations at that end with a terminal stop. Gotta change this from signings to yard as well. And finally, I also got to basically add the cargo buildings, which will be using the cargo shed mod. We'll place down a main building here, as well as two of these buildings side by side. These buildings will hold at least 160 units of cargo. But however, how is the cargo going to be traveling from here into Longhorn? Simple. Once we basically add this road in and connect it to the main road network here, we'll place down a warehouse. Now, if I didn't mention this in the previous episode, a warehouse is basically a really good building to use. It's from the warehouse mod, but it will allow you to basically pick up a large amount of commodities. The capacity here is basically, what I'm using is 80 per platform, but the building can hold up to 3,000 units of cargo, which is very useful for those trains when they get longer and have a lot more commodities on board. We'll also rename this from long, Lower Longhorn to Longhorn Warehouse. That being said and done, let's start off laying down the track make the track a little basically fixed at a straight slope. Let's see. Ooh, 30 degrees. I do not like that. I'll just change it then. We'll change it to 
a switch at 50 going right into the station. We'll do a 45 degree right there. Well, not 45 degree, 45 miles per hour. And then we'll basically connect this and connect this. So now the freight station will be fully connected to our network. Too much curvature. Sometimes the track linking algorithm in the game is quite unusual. Alright, that takes care of that. And then basically, we'll make this out a little bit, and then make it a 45 degree, not degree, 45 mile an hour curve into the station. We're also going to make this track a little bit straight and on a fixed radiant. And then we'll basically reconnect it here. That being said and done, we'll just flatten the ground out a little bit. And then we'll basically start adding the next station to the railroad to basically connect to the town of Javaburg. Because there's a grain farm there, and we could supply grain as well as water to produce barrels of alcohol. Let's basically also finish getting this ground a little more flatter. And let's see. Hmm. We'll have to curve this track over this road crossing. And then basically connect it to the station. Because eventually we'll be getting towns that need alcoholic barrels delivered. Let's see. 50 miles an hour. Do this. We'll connect this and this. Connect this and this. We'll basically convert this into a diamond, as it's a crossing that leads to an industry. And then basically, let's see, 40 miles an hour on that switch, and then connect to that track, and then connect to this. Alright, now for the next part is to connect to the town of Javaburg. Now let's see. Now since Javaburg is going to be part of the new main line, it will probably be needing a large grand station, as my trains later on will be quite big enough, and I can't use the little Madrid Delica station entirely because the platform well, particularly track 4, is too small for a long train. We'll basically just place the station down for now, and not operate some trains until we get the new mainline section finished. We'll convert this from a bridge to an embankment. Oh, I also forgot. I recently added this new mod called... The Mountain Creek Bridge. It has 37 miles an hour, but it's a really nice looking wooden trestle bridge. I'll probably might be using it later on on a particular section of track that goes over a river. Well, actually, it might be going over this river because we need to cross it. We'll then connect here. Connect to this platform, and then connect here and here. Construction not possible, what? Oh my gosh. Sometimes this track laying algorithm can sometimes be such a pain to work with. Too much curvature. So, again, sometimes this thing happens a lot. All 
right, that takes care of that. Now then, let's see. The track will split off to the left for the new main line, but this track will connect to the old main line. We'll also need to connect to this grain farm. This will be a 360 meter freight station with terminal track. We'll connect to this here. And then basically lower the grade down as much as we can to reach the main. Basically make it flat again. Make it straight. Curve down. Make it flat again. Curve to the right, go here, and then double slip switch this, and then finally build a bridge over the river, and we'll use the Mountain Creek Bridge as we're only operating slow trains at the time. But yeah, this bridge is going to look really great. We'll then have to build over this road to connect to the main line, which won't be too difficult. Plus, it also le allows us to easily connect to that root plantation to basically allow us to transport, well, fruit. But we don't have any destinations that we are connected to right now that requires it. Normal cross buck for the crossings that connect to between towns. Fifty, and then basically do this. Hmm. I think I should have had relayed that section a little bit better. Actually, this could all work out. If I could just do it like this. Ooh, that does not look good. Let's basically do this. Let's see. Hmm. Let's, let's just try it like this and then connect it here. It's not going to be fast, but at least it will work pretty well. I want at least my passenger trains to at least go at at least 50, 40 miles an hour at minimum. Alright. Now, with that done, it's time for adding the signaling system. So I'm going to cut this video right here and I'll see you all in just a moment once the signals have been placed. And then we can get started on transporting our first loads of commodities. And we're back. Now that everything has been set up signal-wise, we can now get started on getting our depots in place to buy ourselves our first pieces of equipment to get our company up and going. So, other than basically placing down the signals, I also placed down the locomotive servicing facility here near Longhorn, with a coal storage bin, a water tower, and a sanding house for my locomotives so they can have fuel, water, and sand before they leave for their morning runs. And I also got to basically make this a little more realistic. Of course, there's going to be a separate one for electric trains later on when they become available. I'm also going to extend this out just a tiny bit and then just flatten the ground around it to make it a little more realistic. Alright, now with that done, we can now also place down some new station buildings. Now, since this already connects to a whole bunch of buildings, we don't need to use it. 
we don't need a place down a transportation service in that area. However, here in Greenwood, I'm going to place down a trolley line around the town so we can at least get some people to where they need to go. And here in Longhorn, I'm going to place down a two-lane road here. Well, a medium-sized road. And then connect it to the main road here. I also want to make sure that this is also uh, changed. And then add one bus stop here. And then another one here in town. And also build one... Well, let's see. Javaberg actually has a lot of catchment. So I think it's okay for now. So, we'll place down a couple of these trolley stops. One near the station, one in the residential district, one in the commercial district, as well as one in the industrial district. We'll then place down a tram depot to, play, to operate electric trams. And then, place a road depot here and Longhorn to operate road vehicles. Now that all being done, let's get started on some vehicles. First of all, we're going to operate some local passenger trains as we haven't built another terminal station for the express. So this will be called local train number one. And then we'll connect this to here to Longhorn and be known as local train number two. This will also be in this color, light gray. Then we also got to get work and started on hauling freight as well. So, we'll connect the Greenwood Central. Well, this needs to be renamed to Greenwood Water Pumping Station. And we're going to classify this as Freight Train A1A, which is basically carrying liquids. And it will be carrying water. Basically, the A represents the first type of commodity, first type of this train, and the and then the A basically it is gonna basically uh it's the first type of train since it has multiple destinations. This is gonna leave on platform six and drop it off at platform four. Then we're also going to connect this and connect this to the Brighton Bre to the Longhorn Brewery. Give this a blue color, and this will be known as Freight Train B1A, which will be carrying farm products. In this case, it's grain. Full load, ten minutes, and then we need to set up a trolley route. We'll connect these towns together. This will be known as Trolley Service A1. And then do the same on the reverse route. And this will be known as Trolley Service A2. And finally, placing out a bus service between the station and Longhorn, which will be known as Bus Service A. This will be painted yellow, and now we can finally get started on purchasing our vehicles. Alright, let's see. For look we only have steam-powered locomotives for now, and... Oh. I did not set my vehicle region from European to America. That will be taken care of in Episode 3. So for now, we'll get the John Bull 420 steam locomotive and a couple of these coaches... And that will be used for one of the local trains, along with the Norris 440 Virginia. Then we'll need a locomotive to handle freight. We'll use the Camden and Amboy 080 Monster locomotive to pick up loads of, well, rain. Since it's not set in the United States, we don't have gondolas. And, ooh. We don't actually have the normal American gondola. So I'll have to basically switch that out, and I need to take out a bit of another loan to buy these equipment. 
I'll get it up to about 50 million dollars. I'll buy it. And then, for the water, I'll use the Baldwin Six Wheeled 060 and pick up some, uh, crumbs. There's no American style tanker. Can the small flat car carry any liquids? Uh, it cannot. Neither can the triple axle. Well, this is a bit of a predicament. Hmm. Well then, I guess we're stuck with this for now. Then we'll also need to set up some buses. We'll pop. Oh. Well then, I guess I will basically call it for this episode. We already got everything set up, but my vehicle selection is not set to the correct region. So, that will be fixed in episode 3, but if you enjoyed this episode of my Let's Play Transport Fever 2, Please be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. The Texas Gaming Industries for new video uploads every Friday or Saturday, depending on my outside schedule. And as always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye!